Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, six rugby league stories, whether it's a New Zealand Maori rugby league, all the way to Batley Bulldogs, or from Melbourne Storm to St. Helens. So it's my episode where we see six stories from around the world, which I feel that you guys deserve to know. And I will bring them to you in full with a little bit of commentary from myself. They were interest of me, uh, to me, so I'm sure that they could be an interest to you. So without further ado, here are those six stories. As the New Zealand Maori Rugby League approached their fifth year of involvement in the Alt Rugby League All-Stars game over with the NRL, their chairperson John Devonshire believes the time is right for the event to head across the Tasman Sea. Next year, the annual showpiece will be held outside of Australia for the first time, with Rotorua uh, confirmed as the host city on Monday at a ceremony attended by NRL CEO Andrew Abdo, Australian Rugby League Indigenous Council Chair Katrina Fanning, and other dignitaries, including representatives of the Te Rarua, the local people of the land. Devonshire said that he hoped to bring the event to New Zealand ever since the Maori took, uh, first took part in the All-Stars game in 2019. It's something that from the first game we envisaged, but we had to prove ourselves. Uh, it was all about respect, Devonshire said. We've experienced their indigenous culture, we've been to Melbourne, we've been to the Gold Coast, Townsville and Sydney. Now, I'm pleased to say that we've earned the right for them to come over. In conjunction with the Te Arawe uh, people, it is our turn to show our hospitality and how we do it as a people, as Maori, and give them a chance to experience our culture. Rather than taking the event to a bigger city, the NRL has opted to play the All-Stars at the cultural epicentre of New Zealand, located 230 kilometres south of Auckland. Rotowa um, was the first city in New Zealand to be declared bilingual, English and Maori, with 40% of its residents identifying as Maori. Abdo said with that in mind it is a third it's the perfect place to hold the cultural salt showpiece. From a community perspective, this makes sense for us to play here. It's an incredibly special place to, and the Te Arawa to represent the Maori culture in a way that is truly authentic, Abdo said. It was an easy decision to make the first place that would play the historic match in New Zealand. We are incredibly incited for the, this offers so for what this offers us this next year Rotorua International Stadium which we've shown in the pictures is a, has a capacity of around about 20,000 and most recently hosted the NRL Telstra Premiership trial between Warriors and West Tigers in 2020 while the Kiwis played Papua New Guinea and Tonga there in 2010 and 2009, respectively. Fanning added that the ARLIC are proud to help bring the concept to New Zealand, despite being a demand to hold it in Australia yet again. I know that this is culturally the right place to bring this game, Fanning said. When the All-Stars started, it was a great concept, but the inclusion of the Maori All-Stars made it excellent. We are really proud to be part of bringing the game here. We continue with NRL CEO Abdu Abdo as he described International Rugby League as an X-Factor for the code and believes it will build momentum with a dedicated window at the end of the season. The first international fixtures involving NRL stars for in almost three years was played last week, well, a couple of weekends ago, and whet the appetite of players and fans for an end-of-season World Cup and more regular tests. 
However, with State of Origin returning to Wednesday nights for all three matches of the series, when the broadcast deal with Channel 9 begins next year, the standalone representative round will make way for an end of season international window. Abdo said the change will make International Rugby League stronger as players would not have to choose between State of Origin or representing their na nation of heritage, as numerous members of the Blues and Maroons teams were forced to, while Super League stars would also be available. Significantly, there would also be opportunities for a revival of Kangaroo Tours, test series and tournaments at the end of the season, which would be have more significant than one-off internationals mid-year that exclude Australia. We are working through the season structure for next year. It is a new cycle and there are some changes that are linked to the new broadcast arrangement with our partners, but I will say this, the ARL Commission are 100% committed to international football, Abdo said. We are all incredibly excited about the rebirth of international football coming out of what we have been restricted to the last couple of years. This weekend was a great example for how important it is to the players and to the fans and to all of us. It is the X Factor we have with Rugby League, the opportunity that would ha we have to really grow the international game, particularly here in Australia and New Zealand, and of course throughout the Pacific, so international footy will be a real priority going forwards. What we are doing is thinking strategically about the season and how to construct are the construction of the season, pre-season, state of origin, the premiership, and an international window in October and November. Interest in the international game has been growing strongly since the 2017 World Cup and the, the defection of Jason Tamalolo, Andrew Fafita and other stars to Tonga helping turn the Pacific Nation into a powerhouse team that narrowly missed the final in which Australia beat England 6-0. Tonga beat New Zealand during the tournament and won tests in 2019 against Great Britain and Australia in what is likely to be the last match the Kangaroos will have played before their opening World Cup clash with Fiji in, on October the 15th in Leeds. The men's and women's international doubleheader between New Zealand and Tonga at Mount Smart the past Saturday week was a sellout and also established a record number for a women's international attendance, with 18,369 fans on hand to see the Kiwis Ferns beat the Mate Ma'a Tonga 50 points to 12. The Pacific Test doubleheader in, Samo in which Samoa beat the Cook Islands 42 points to 12 and Papua New Guinea down Fiji 24 points to 14 drew a crowd of 10,720 at Campbelltown Sports Stadium on Saturday night. While the fixtures provided a World Cup warm-up for the Pacific Island nations, Cook Islands forward Tinirua Arona was the only player to make the trip from England as there was a full round of Super League matches, which forced Tonga coach Christian Wolves to hand over the reins to Dean Young. Saying that, the week before was the origin fixtures, where England weren't allowed to get any of their stars from down under. Strategically, it makes sense to have a dedicated international window to harmonise across the world that has all the players available and captures the imagination of friends, uh, fans, Abdo said. The concept of us returning to three Wednesday night origins in the new broadcast cycle is one that has been very carefully thought through and obviously discussed as part of our commercial agreements. And that opens up an opportunity to strategically think at the end of the season from an international perspective. Front row forward Daniel Suf Luca Fafita will join South Sydney Rabbitohs this week after gaining his immediate release from his playing contract at the Sydney Roosters. The Rabbitohs had already agreed to sign the 22-year-old uh, Matraville Tigers junior for next season and the two after, 
and on a contract until the end of the 2025 season. However, he will join the club for the remainder of the 2022 season and will be available for selection this week. Saluka Fafita has played 20 NRL games for the Roosters since making his debut as a 20-year-old against the Titans in 2020. 20, 20, 20, 20. Anyway, Saluka Fafita was a member of the South Sydney SG Ball Cup and Harold Matthews Cup squads between 2014 and 2017, playing alongside current Rabbitohs stars Cameron Murray and Campbell Graham. He was born on the exact same birthday as mine, 19th of August, but in 1999 rather than mine, 1981. He's Sydney born and bred, having been born in Sydney, New South Wales, and is 120 centimetres tall, weighing 112 kilograms. Played for Roosters since 2020, so he has been a bench player would say uh, in regards to playing for the Cross City rivals of the Rabbitohs. So far this season he has only made seven appearances, made two tackle breaks and averages a post contact meters of 148.6 with an average hit up a game of five. He's offloaded once, made 49 tackles and been proficient with 90.7 of them. I apologise, the average metres run is 52 metres, with a total running metres of 368. He'll be an addition to grow with the Roosters, and see how their forward pack mounts up with Big Salika Fafita um, joining the ranks. Championship Coach of the Year Craig Lingard is working his magic at Batley again, but believes he is not fashionable enough for a Super League job. The Bulldogs beat Featherston at Post Office Road last Sunday to strengthen their playoff push for a shot at the big time. But the unassuming head coach feels Super League won't come knocking for him personally, unless it is with Batley. I think some clubs think it's easier to recruit somebody from Australia or a big name rather than somebody from Batley, who has never been in, in a instant full-time environment and never played Super League Lingard told Love Rugby League. It's an easy option for clubs not to recruit me, and I'm not particularly bothered. If this is my last job, I'll just move on to something else. My ambition is to be better, a better coach than I was a player. I was an ordinary player, never good enough to play Super League, but hopefully as a coach, I can develop and get better. Speaking on this week's Love Rugby League podcast, Lingard also re discusses the recruitment policy that sees him hire players on character over skills. Sometimes a club recruits sides rather than teams, but you have to get the right people in. It's person over player. They have to fit in, he said. You spend a lot of time with individuals and you have to mold them into a group who want to be better together or who, and who, when the backs are against the wall, they will come out swinging for each other. That doesn't always happen. I insist on meeting every single person and look them in the eye and let them look me in the eye across the table. If they sit in front of me and I think, I don't like this bloke, he's a crank, then they'll know straight away they don't want to work for me. There's no point waiting until the first day of pre-season and sitting and looking at me and think he's an absolute tool, this bloke. Get it out of the Get it out of the way straight away. Melbourne Storm 5-8 Cameron Munster has reaffirmed his commitment to the club amid speculation he could join Wayne Bennett at the Dolphins next season. Munster fronted the media on Saturday afternoon to put to bed to any suggestion he will link up with Bennett at the NRL's newest franchise in 2023. 
The 27-year-old is a free agent at the end of the year, but can talk to a rival club from November the 1st. Sparking speculation in recent weeks, Munster will seek a release from his final season of his contract to join Bennett's side. Bennett has made no secrets of Munster would be a star attraction at the Dolphins, but the Maroon star said he's not in the mood to leave Melbourne midway through his current contract. There's been a bit of speculation, but myself and my management have never asked the club for a release next year, Munster said. I'm contracted and committed to the club for 2023, and I'm really excited. Every week there is something coming up about myself. It's getting a bit frustrating because I'm worrying about my party. I'm not going to lose myself by asking for a release whatsoever. I want to see out my contract. I don't want to be one of those people who decides I want to leave. My main goal this year was to win a premiership with the Storm and next year as well. I'm still committed to the club and want to make sure we play some of our consistent footy finals. Finals footy even. On Bennett himself, Munster said Wayne's Wayne. Probably just trying to stir the pot if it's nothing to do with me. Munster has turned his life around off the field in the past 12 months and he has a partner and a newborn to consider when he signs in his contract, his next NRL deal after 2023. And at 27, Munster's next contract will be career defining and possibly the final long term deal of his glittering career. I am not in negotiations until November the 1st. I haven't really spoken to my partner Bianca or my management team whatsoever about going any further, he said. I'm enjoying my time in Melbourne. I've obviously got a young one and enjoyed my time with him when I can. He makes everything more exciting. It's enjoyable to be a father and obviously a son who kick, who I can kick the footy with and do my dad do things my dad used to do with me. Meanwhile, Munster said his shoulder injury that left him out of the Storm's loss to Manly on Thursday night had recovered better than expected, with his spot in Queensland's origin side likely. Probably a bit of grade 3 carry-on. I'll do everything I can to make sure I'm right, he said. Promising St. Allen's prop forward Dan Norman has extended his stay at the Saints by a further year which will keep him at the club until the end of the 2023 season. Norman, aged 24, made his debut in 2021, but it is this season where he's impressed, scoring four times in just eight appearances. The 6 foot 5, 113 kilo prop was born in Warrington, but joined London Broncos ahead of the 2020 campaign from Witness Vikings, where he made 19 appearances, including appearing at Wembley as the Vikings suffered defeats in the 1895 Cup Final at the hands of Sheffield Eagles. An England representative at youth level, Norman made his Super League debut in 2018 against Sulphur Red Devils before Witness were relegated. On signing his 12 month extension, Norman said, I'm real, I am made up with to be staying it's such a good club and it is where i want to be all the lads and the staff and the fans are great and i'm looking forward to the future i've enjoyed getting some more game time this season and luckily i have been in the right place at the right time to get over for a few tries this is the place for me to be for my development and i'm learning a lot from an experienced pat members Head coach Christian Wolf said, This is a great reward for the effort Dan has put in with us. We identified him as a big athletic body and we came he came to us quite raw, but he has developed really well over the last year. He has a great work ethic and is a great person. Everyone has seen his improvement and has had a big impact. The game against Leeds Rhinos was a good example of that. This season he is holding his hand up and has really put himself into the picture.
And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking the notification bell for any new videos that may be coming your way in, in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are of today's episode. Six, six stories? I'm not sure about Andrew Abdul's words, to be honest. I think it's uh, an RL priority, sod everything else type of deal. Origin is the biggest money spinner over there for Rugby League. It will get preferential treatment above everything if NRL had their way. International Rugby at the end of the year? It's kind of disheartening that. They should do a couple of tests uh, Wednesday, Sunday for everyone to play at least twice so that they can build up for a big tournament and then have the end of the year tournament. Who knows what will go on in the future. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below about any of these stories. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of you who keep reaching out. I love how you get involved and I want more people to be that involved. There's some really good discussions on these chats and on these videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep them up. But I will leave it there and say remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And I wish you all the best. So please stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode.